Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to share my views on what Microsoft should do with Windows 12. Now, as I make this video, Windows 12 has yet to be officially announced. But with Windows 11 launched in 2021, there are now some reasonable rumours floating around we're going to get a new version of Windows in 2024, maybe 2025, and that is going to be called, guess what, Windows 12. Always when we get a new version of Windows released, people pile in to review all the new features, comment on what's missing, things like that. And so I thought it might be nice for once to have some broader user discussion about Windows before we get the new version, when Microsoft may still be listening. As you may be aware, you can feed into the development of Windows by what's called the Windows Insider program. But what this basically does is allows us to comment on technical features that have already been coded. And in part of this video, I want to talk a bit more widely than that. So let's go and get started. The first thing I think Microsoft should do with Windows 12 is to embrace rather than reject those people who build their own computers. Today, if you spend a few hundred dollars building a PC and you want to install Windows on it, then even the Home Edition costs $139. And given that PC manufacturers and enterprise users typically pay a few tens of dollars for their Windows licenses, and end users with older versions of Windows typically get an upgrade for free, this really shows a disdain for home builders, for self-builders. And that's ridiculous because people who build their own computers are probably the most enthusiastic about their hardware and software. Microsoft should be embracing people who build their own computers as advocates for a new operating system, not as people who go, oh, look at the price of that, isn't it disgraceful how we're being ripped off by Microsoft. And of course, a lot of people who build their own computer don't buy the official version of Windows. They buy a third-party OEM license key that was intended for use by an original equipment manufacturer. They buy that from a website off here somewhere. So everybody loses out. But imagine if there was something like the Windows 12 Home Builder Edition, selling for something like, I don't know, $29.99. I think a lot of self-builders would embrace that. They'd buy the official version. Microsoft probably wouldn't lose any money because it would sell lots of official versions rather than all these keys being bought by various means off here somewhere. And uh, they could even have promotions with this. Imagine having, for example, the Home Builder Gaming Edition of Win Windows 12, where you pay uh, your $30 and you get Windows, but you also get offers on various games and things like that. Or they could do the same for content creators, that type of thing. So. I really hope that Microsoft uses Windows 12 to embrace home builders to build a better relationship with people who build their own computers. The second thing that Microsoft should do with Windows 12 is to hand control of the user interface back to the user whose interface it actually is. Until Windows 7, users had precise control of the font for each interface element, not just its size, but also the face, weight, and color, as well as control of things like highlights. And this allowed Windows users to set things up just as they wanted them. But from Windows 8 onwards, all we can now change is overall display and text scaling. And I'm sure that Microsoft will claim this allows for more effective and consistent user interface design. However, many Linux distros, such as Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition, or any distro running a KDE Plasma desktop, prove that it is possible to provide the user of a modern desktop environment with the same level of customization that we enjoyed in Windows 7 and earlier. So please, Microsoft, allow users who want to, to exercise full interface control. The next thing that Microsoft should do with Windows 12 is to recognize that a single standardized interface cannot meaningfully meet the requirements of billions of different users. 
Beyond handing the user control of different interface elements, they should therefore make available a choice of at least two desktops. And these should include a classic desktop with a proper menu that can be structured as the user wishes, and which is free of the visual clutter that so many people do not want. Microsoft really needs to move away from forcing everybody to use something that may look nice but which functions poorly. And Windows 12 provides them with such an opportunity. A really lovely thing that Microsoft could do with Windows 12 is to start respecting user choice. And to give you an example of how Microsoft don't respect user choice in Windows today, here I've got my Surface 6 tablet, which every month interrupts what I'm doing to give me this message to tell me that I need to finish setting up my PC. No, I don't. But I should be backing up my files with OneDrive cloud storage. I do not want to do that, Microsoft. I do use OneDrive. It's a good service, but I don't want to use it in this instance. And oh, look, I should be enhancing my web browsing experience by restoring Microsoft's recommended browser settings. Or in other words, Microsoft does not respect my choice to use Chrome and Firefox. And in my view, this is an absolutely classic example of the utter contempt Microsoft has for its customers. I purchased this piece of hardware. This is not free hardware and software. I paid a lot of money for this. I've decided how I want to use it. But Microsoft cannot accept that. It keeps telling me every single month, interrupt with what I'm doing, to make me want to do something else. And at the moment, Microsoft is still a monopolist in the desktop computing marketplace. It knows we don't have to like using Windows, we simply have to tolerate it. But eventually, its monopoly will wane. And I imagine that at some point in the future, people will look back and go, do you remember when Microsoft did things like this, where it had so little respect for its customers it couldn't accept what they decided to do on their own hardware? Wonder why Microsoft no longer dominant in the, in the desktop operating system marketplace. This, this might be part of it, hadn't it? So I really do hope that doesn't happen because I hope that Microsoft decides to build a better relationship with its customers. It uses Windows 12 to start respecting user choice. The final thing I'd really like to experience in Windows 12 is a consistent and fully functional user interface. And you might be thinking, well, of course you'll get that, but we didn't in Windows 11. For example, if we go across to the Windows 11 desktop and we right click on something, we bring up a context menu that has got commands missing and it provides an inconsistent mess of icon and text based selection. Now, as I've covered in my Windows 11 configuration video, it is possible to apply a registry hack to make a right click bring up a proper context menu. But we should not have to edit the registry to access basic Windows functionality. Quite why Microsoft decided to let a 12 year old on work experience redesign this part of the user interface, I do not know. But whatever the reason in Windows 12, please Microsoft revert to a competent, consistent user interface, or at the very least, provide an option to turn off your latest innovations. Windows 12 provides Microsoft with the opportunity not just to inflict us with new technical and interface changes, but to reset its relationship with the user community. And I hope for the first time in decades, Microsoft actually takes that opportunity, not least to embrace rather than reject those of us who build our own computers. But what would you like to see in Windows 12? Please let us all know down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.